Hey friends, well, welcome back to another episode of the vlog. It's been a little minute since our last update. Things with work have been crazy, but I'm finally able to get back in front of the camera and I'm so excited because the last time we chatted, I think it was right before the deck was built and it's been a couple of weeks since we've been able to hop on and there's been so much going on. So much including the deck is done, yay! So now that the deck is done, uh, today I'm gonna give you a tour of what it looks like across the whole yard, but is outside so we got to clean up i've got some summer planters that i want to go ahead and get planted up so that they can get growing um and then once we've done all of our planting and stuff we're gonna clean off the deck give you a tour of what everything looks like um and then i'll likely start pulling off the patio furniture to down here so that i can get that cleaned up I said I was gonna paint it. I don't know if I'm gonna get to that, but I do wanna um, clean off up there, just maybe blow everything, sweep everything off real good. So I'm gonna get as much as I can done today. Um, but most importantly, I wanna go ahead and get everything potted up, get everything blown off. Um, pollen is crazy. This oak tree is a blessing and a curse because it has like droppings everywhere everywhere but we got a lot to do so we're gonna spend a little time back here tidying up getting as much done as we possibly can because we are fully enjoying this space and almost done outside of the furniture that needs to go here um the garden bed that i'm gonna build in next week's video and just edging out the borders of the flower beds on this side of the yard, we're gonna be done for the season so that we can just enjoy back here and have a good time. So let's get to cleaning and let me show you what we looking like. I'm so excited before we get everything decorated and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Let's hop into today's episode. All right, so first things first, let me show you the current condition of the deck. Um, and what I say by this oak tree is a blessing and a curse. So as you can see, there are pollen stems everywhere. And it does not matter how many times a day you blow this, the next morning it's gonna come out looking like this at least into the end of April. So daily it's a chore, but I wanna clean all of this up. Uh, get as much of the patio cleaned as possible today. So we're gonna start there. But before we start cleaning, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pot up the plants because it's gonna get really messy and then I can just clean in one strike. So this particular pot I brought from the front of the house, it's gonna go back to the front of the house in the garage, uh, in front of the garage between my two fruit trees. I planted a peony bulb here and I mean, this bulb has not done anything. Uh, I've planted a few peony bulbs and they just have not been my friends. I mean, it literally looks the same as it did when I planted it like a month ago. So I don't know if it got too much water in the rain, who knows, but it's not gonna work in this pot. So my original thought was to put this hibiscus and I'll tell you more about it when we really get to potting it up in this pot, but I think I'm gonna put this hibiscus in this kind of aged black terracotta pot. This is a fire and ice hibiscus. I got it from Lowe's today and it is absolutely gorgeous. You will learn that I am infatuated with hibiscus plants. This is a tropical hibiscus, so it's going to have to come inside if the weather gets too cold. But honestly, I have two other tropical hibiscus like this one. This is a president. I have two presidents that are here on the patio. This one took a beating over the winter time. The other one is so-so, but um, honestly, I just brought them in when the temperatures dropped too low. And then when it warmed up during the day, I put them back outside. But these are already budding. These have a really pretty red bulb, a red flower, I'm sorry. So all of the hibiscus on the patio, or the two hibiscus that are going to stay on the patio will have really red bulbs. Uh, I'm going to 
underplant this other president hibiscus that is struggling with some sweet potato vine with some impatience and with some petunias just so while it's recovering in the front there'll be a pop of color to kind of add some vibrancy to the front of the house I have kind of a strategy when I'm creating these planters that we'll talk through later on in the video but I figured since this one was, I, I know something's wrong with the roots. Like when I pulled it out, it looks like all of the dirt and everything underneath the root system is decomposing and these roots are not breathing in this pot. So I just, I just took all of the decomposing stuff off. Like the plant is still living, the stems are still healthy. So I just took as much of it off as I could and then put it in this brand new soil gave it some fertilizer, topped it off with some mulch, and I'm hoping she'll make a recovery. If not, um, Lowe's and Home Depot have hibiscus coming out the ears. Um, I can always replace it, but I kind of get joy in bringing things back to life. So I'm hoping that with the little TLC, I spoil my plots, um, that she'll recover and she'll do fine during the season, but I'll give her the month of April into May to start showing some signs of recovery. And if it's too late for her, I'll just pull her out and replace her. So uh, my strategy to pots, especially like when I see these pots that I want, like in the store, you know, you go and you see these uh, design planters for the summertime and they have like an 80, 90, $100 price tag. Absolutely not. I can do that myself. So I always want like a really big striking plant in the middle. And then I want a couple of things that are trail. So in this scenario, we've got the sweet potato vine and the petunia that are trail. And then I have the impatient, which is kind of a mid-level plant. It's a upright, but it'll kind of fall over the edges just a bit, but it doesn't trail just to add some spice to the front of the container. And in this scenario, the hibiscus is going to be like the showstopper when she does well. And I follow that pattern for all of my planters that way I have some interest and it's not just a single plant especially if the pots are big that way when I'm watering there's more than one plant there to absorb the water and I get a color show from like top to bottom So for this one, this one gonna have the same red flower that that one has, but underplanted with doing shades of white. So we got a white impatient, this really pretty white and purple petunia, and then this chartreuse uh, sweet potato vine, and that's because this pot is considerably bigger. So I kind of want to have some stuff falling over the sides. The impatient is upright, so we'll see how it grows against this hibiscus. But I think that's going to be a pretty, really pretty summer pot. Um, so yeah, let's get those planted. Okay, so first of all, um, I love this planter. I got it from Walmart. If y'all are sleeping on Walmart, like outdoor stuff, don't. Walmart has the best planters, some of the best outdoor stuff in the spring and summer. You go to Walmart, don't forget about Walmart. But anyways, I'll, I'll link everything that I can down in the description. Cause some of these plants you can get from, uh, from purchasing online as well if they're hardy in your area. So that petunia I actually got from the grocery store. I won't be able to link it, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I absolutely love it. And my thought process was I have this big, beautiful, striking red flower on the plants and then it'll be underplanted with like shades of white and purple is gonna be a really nice kind of combo. So I'm excited to see that all come together. This particular plant 
already has flower buds on it. So I'm thinking in like the next week or so, we should see some flowers. I'm going in with some fertilizer, one particularly for the hibiscus. This plant food has been really good. The ones in the ground absolutely love it. And then I'm giving the other plants some blood meal, which will also be good for the hibiscus as well. But I'll fertilize these pots once a month through the growing season I'm giving them tons of water especially when it gets super super hot but this is a pretty this is a 16 inch pot so it's got plenty of room for everything to kind of spread and be really really nice um, and then once everything's fertilized I'm topping it off with some composting mulch um, which will help me not only keep moisture in but it will break down and provide nutrients as well so two for one and I love it Okay, so next up is this beauty. This is my elephant ear. And I've got this. This is actually a vine plant. Oh my God. It's not the Bougainvillea, it's the other one. Not the Mandevilla. I'll put the name on the screen. But I really like this one because this elephant ear is gonna get huge. I'm actually gonna transition her to that corner where that is because that's gonna move and go back to the front uh, so she can get sun all day. Um, yeah, cause this needs to like, this is gonna pop. I wanna see this. And then I'm probably gonna bring that here and then I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet, but we'll see. Um, or I don't know, I'll figure it out. I might bring those that are supposed to be palladiums over here. And if they don't grow like I want them to, then I'll plant some more palladiums. But anyways, this is a Creeping Jenny. I have to finish potting this up. Originally, I had it just like this but that's not gonna be enough so I'm gonna fill in this hole I'm gonna actually divide that creeping Jenny and put part of it here and then stuff the other part down in here for this one it may not grow as aggressive but I should do what I wanted to do it's gonna be beautiful this is probably my favorite planter of them all so we got allocation this beauty that is she blooms white so everything in here is white then we got some white petunias which are gonna trail then we got a creeping jenny that's gonna trail and then we got our white impatience it's gonna be gorgeous and this one needs sun so she's gonna have to come out from right here because she's not gonna get enough sun here and go over there in that bright corner so she can blow up and do her thing so we're gonna plank this colorful hibiscus with two white decorated pots um, and then that's gonna go back in front of the garage so we can get light and that hibiscus can recover so let's plant up the rest of this pot get her moved move some more stuff around child um, and see what we do I have this other petunia I've got this pot, but I'm not sure if I want to add another petunia. This is a can of lily. I'll show you the ones up front. Uh, she was in the ground and she was struggling, so I potted her in this pot and just underplanted her with these two petunias, and I think that's going to be enough because that pot is rather small. So I'm thinking rather than, it's just this pot is a shade lover. So this gets afternoon sun, but this fern likes shade. This sweet potato vine does better in shade. So I don't know, cause I was gonna stick her right there and let her trail down like that. It just may not grow as aggressive, but we can always play with it and see. I think I like that pop, those two pops of color here and here. So I might do that, I might do that. 
I might do that because it's still bright right here. Like we got sun bouncing, but this is still shade until late afternoon. So I don't know. Let's see. But for now, let's get this beauty finished up so we can get her moved out um, to let sun. So out of all of my pots, this is probably my most tropical pot. Ugh, she's so pretty. Um, I am hoping this alocasia actually, I she had one leaf on her and she overwintered right in this pot. And she started growing out with that one leaf in mm, probably early March when we had like that fake spring. And now that it's warming up, the leaves are coming out. So I'm going to actually put her in the sun because I think she can take a little bit more sun. And I figure out what the name of this plant is. It's a Diplandia. Mm. I had these in the ground last year in a shadier part and they did amazing. Um, they are a vining type plant. So I am curious to see how it's going to perform in the pot with um, this alocasia, but they're so pretty oh my god they're so pretty and they just make the space feel so tropical um this creeping jenny is too big in the pint that it's in so i'm just going to separate it into two and it's going to turn out that i'm going to have to take some of the bottom roots off which it should be fine because i'm separating the plants so the root system isn't supporting as much green green life on the top but when she starts to go crazy and trail down i mean by the time summer comes Mm, mm, mm. Can you imagine like the barbecues and the ice lemonade and tea and the hibiscus tea that we're going to be drinking? It's going to be amazing. Got to figure out what table, what furniture I'm going to put out here. But we had a conversation another time. But just the environment is going to be such a vibe with all of this color and all of this tropicalness. I am an island girl at heart. And because I don't have a water feature in the backyard, Tim was not about to get a pool. I don't even know if we're going to be able to do the hot tub just based off of the space. We'll talk about that when I do the deck tour. Um, it does help to have these pretty plants because they kind of just set the mood. So music on the patio is going to be dope. And I cannot, I know I keep saying this, but these planters got me so hype for what the summertime is going to be back here. Like the kids got a little blow up pool. It's going to be a, such a vibe, such a vibe. But yeah, she's in uh, and I can't wait to see that creeping Jenny like do her thing. Now I'm giving this one all blood meal. These are all green plants. Even the blood meal will help some of the flowering plants. When I come back to do more fertilizing, I'm probably going to do just like a general plant food in the pots um, to make sure that if it's anything that's flowering, they get the phosphorus that they need to help flower as well. But the blood meal, I think, is pretty even on it. And I could be saying it wrong. I might be wrong. I need to look at the package. So don't let me say that. Um, originally, I thought I was going to take the other Creeper Jenny and put it in this pot, but she was going to be too big. So I did what I didn't think I was going to do. And I put this um, petunia, the other petunia that I had, the extra one, I dropped her in. I really like that pop of color against this Tahitian, um, gosh, what's the name of this thing? This quarter line. So I'm hoping that with the sun that it gets, it'll be enough. Um, if not, then I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to take it out and remove it with something else because this does get shade for the most part of the day. It'll get some evening sun. So I might not get as many flowers as I would if it were in full sun, but I do like that pop of color that that flower brings against the quarter line and kind of sitting in between those dark purple sweet potato vines. So I'm hoping that contrast works out. So um, I just dropped the rest of the Creeping Jenny in this pot. I got this like pre-made pot which is why it's gray sitting on top of in this black cover pot of um, caladiums that were supposed to have all these bulbs in them and the caladiums are supposed to come up I don't know we'll see I know caladiums come up late um so we'll see how it goes I don't know how the creeping Jenny is going to do with that amount of shade but we'll see um we'll see how it goes so this is probably this is the only fruit tree that's on the patio I have some other fruit trees in the yard. I've got to figure out where they're going, but this is a pink 
guava tree. And I snatched this up from Lowe's and I got it because when we went to Hawaii, you know, if you go to Hawaii, they give you like this pink guava juice. And when I saw the pink guava tree, I was like, oh my God, my my prayers are answered because I cannot find that pink guava juice in any form as pure as it was when I was in Hawaii. So now I will be able to juice it myself and freeze it and do all the things and make smoothies. And I'm so excited. So for my fruit trees, I use um, a fancy soil. This soil actually comes from my nursery. It is a little bit more expensive, um, but I find that it's a little bit more draining. So it allows for better drainage and better nutrients. Like this is really soft to the touch it's great so I just mix in some fruit tree fertilizer into the bottom part of the soil I'll put the tree in fill it back fill it with soil put some more fertilizer in it and then top it off with that same composting mulch um, so that that mulch over time will break down and and um, provide nutrients for the tree this particular fruit tree um, fertilizer I have used in my lemon and lime tree up front and they're doing great. My lime tree is actually starting to flower and show signs of fruiting and my lemon tree has fruits everywhere that'll be ripe by the end of the season. I'll show you that later. Um, and then I've got some blueberry trees, plants that I have to plant in pots. Uh, I'll do that at a later time because I've got to figure, I'm still trying to figure out the direction that I want to go as far as the pots are concerned, but I'm going to drop the fertilizer down in the pot because they need some acidic soil. So I'm actually going to do this in combination with the soil acidifier to keep them blooming and happy while they're in their nursery pot until I can figure out which planter I'm going to actually plant them in. I'll show you where they are. They're not going to stay there, but I'll show you what they look like when we do the deck tour. Uh, yes, I'm dropping a little bit of dirt, but don't worry. I'm going to pick all of that up because I ain't wasting no dirt. Uh, but I'm really excited about this pink guava. She has one fruit on there that's been on there for quite some time. I'm sure she'll be right by midsummer. And then I've got a lot, like a gang of other fruit that are starting to form as well. So I'm excited to get her down in this pot with some really nutrient heavy soil keep her babied over the summer, the spring and summer, so we can get um, some healthy fruit. Guava tend to like it on the drier side, so that's helpful. Um, but I baby my plants, uh, not overwatering them, but I just make sure that I'm very attentive to my pots because I want to make sure that they stay looking like I want them to stay, especially the stuff that we're eating. I want to make sure it's got enough moisture to create like these big juicy fruit and stuff like that so I am watering this one in I do water the rest of the pots in I just did that off camera but I'm watering this one in now because it's a lot of new dirt that I put in the pot um, this is that same 16 inch pot that we just planted um, that hibiscus and under plants in so you see how much plant it can actually handle and I absolutely love it I drilled some additional holes it came with two holes that you can punch out and then I drilled some additional holes down at the bottom to help with water drainage um, but they're absolutely beautiful and I'm thinking I don't know they they may not be big enough for the blueberry plants but this guava has to come inside it's only hardy down so I think like 40 degrees so it my lime tree my tropical business there and have to come inside like I'll make like a little greenhouse inside of the garage um for the winter time it has to come in so I couldn't put it in too large of a pot because I need to be able to move it so she's gonna go back to her spot here uh, she doesn't need as much sun as the rest of the plants on the uh, patio so this goes from sun to shade all day so it's a perfect spot um, right there by the pit I'm not sure if this chair is gonna stay here once I have the table and chairs um, on the deck once I've decided what those are gonna look like I'll determine what is gonna happen with these two additional chairs so now that everything's planted I'm just cleaning up I'm tired and I'm kind of reviewing whether or not I want to do this by hand and I don't. So I went and got my dolly and I put everything on the dolly. Uh, it's time to take this hibiscus back to her rightful place in front of our home. So she's going to go on a little field trip through the backyard to get back to where she's going. And we're going to sit her nice and pretty in the garage, in front of the garage between the two fruit trees and see if we can get some life out of her. Um, through the summertime so now I'm just sweeping up 
which again, uh, I am reconsidering my life. What I was trying to do is not blow dirt everywhere because every I am always washing my hair because I'm always outside playing in the dirt and I don't have my bonnet on. But this broom quickly helped me realize that I am playing myself and I need to just go ahead and get my blower. So I'm just blowing everything off now, getting it all tidied up so I can give you a, a quick rundown of what the deck looks like. And then I'll let you see the planters up close while we are talking about, you know, future plans as far as furniture and stuff like that is concerned. So I'll be back when it's time to do the tour. So my original plan was I thought I was going to pull everything down off of the patio and wash and power wash and sweep and all that good stuff today and I am not going to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just wipe everything down. I can't tell you when I'm going to pull everything off of this patio because the month of April after this week and next week we are traveling until like mid-May so I don't know when I'm gonna have time to do that or when I'll have the energy for it when I'm gonna be at home I'm probably just gonna want to chill so I'm just gonna wipe everything down um, we had some rain so I had my sofas covered I'm still infatuated with my outer set um, and you can still save if you want one. I still got the discount, girl. Check the details. Uh, I love this set because it has been something like all of my other patio furniture. I'm going to have to clean the stuff that's on the deck, the stuff that's in the front. I'm going to have to power wash the seat cushions. Um, you know, some of the seat cushions I may have to replace just depending on how much they've been used because they're not comfortable. Uh, but with these, I haven't had to do that. There's a couple of places that I'll have to spot clean, but they literally, we will have had these for a year um, here coming up pretty soon. And they literally feel the same as they did when we got them. And I know I say that all the time, but for real. Uh, and it's easy for me to cover them. So these always stay protected because they've got this outer shell that you see me rolling up where I just kind of tuck it behind the cushions or if it's raining, I just pull it over. And that also helps to keep them clean, I believe, and keep them like they're supposed to be because if it's raining, it's just real quick, come fold it over. And when it's not raining, I just roll it up like it is and you don't see it. Um, and that has saved me immensely as far as these sofas are concerned. Uh, but now that everything is kind of moved off, the grill is down on the deck. This is what we're working with as far as the cover patio is concerned. So right here, I'm going to have to do some type of storage while I didn't want the grill right there. I do realize that I'm going to need to store stuff like the mosquito spray and the remotes and the grill utensils and stuff um, until we do an outside kitchen. So I want some type of outside storage. I hadn't decided on whether or not I'm gonna make it or I'm gonna buy it. I'm in the season right now with busyness that I'm probably just gonna buy it. I need another basket that's designed for outside to kind of hold our extra pillow cushions and stuff. I saw some additional pillow cushions. These are the same cushions from last year. We just washed them. But I saw some pillow cushions that kind of match the color scheme at Lowe's. So once I decide what table and everything is gonna be on the deck, I'll get those additional pillows. But here's the deck, y'all. Like, mm, I am absolutely in love with this structure because now we can utilize more of our yard. As you can see, we are big outside people. There's our little grill spot. The grill fits perfectly in there. Um, but our yard is so sloped, like there's no flat place natively, organically in the yard. So adding this deck to extend the patio not only gives us a little more space up under the covered patio, but it allows us to utilize the space because now I can sit out here and I watch the kids play on either side of the yard. We built this bar so that if the kids are down below playing on one side, we can sit at the bar and watch them. 
if they are on this side of the yard, we can sit at the table and watch them or I can sit in one of those chairs. If we're grilling, we can just sit there and kind of watch everything that's going on. Um, and it's been nice. So these stairs, we installed these stairs to give us two out points on the yard. So one going to the left, one going to the right. And this brings us down into the lower part of our yard. And this also taps into the space that I was thinking we were going to be able to use to create like another living environment. I don't know if you remember the original plans, but from the original plans, this was supposed to be like two more layers of deck. And I'm glad we didn't do that because that probably would have been too much. But now that this structure is installed, I don't I haven't figured out how I'm going to utilize this down space. I still want the kids to be able to play. Um I do want another environment, but that second kind of environment was going to be for like the hot tub and stuff like that. And I don't know if I have enough space to fall within HOA guidelines as far as privacy and stuff like that is concerned. Because if I put a hot tub down there, I've got to include some privacy and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So for right now, uh, next week, you'll see me build a raised garden bed here. And I got to go ahead and get this done because I've got some veggies over here that need to come right here. This is a full sun spot. It gets sun for the most part of the day. And these are the blueberry bushes and the blackberry bush. I need to get another blackberry. I'm going to have to move them out to another part of the yard. I just don't know where they're going to go yet. Um, but yeah, I I thoroughly enjoy this space even now without having the dinner table here. Here's a view down into the yard. Um, it's just views. Y'all see my little flower beds down there? Like I have intentionally made sure since February that there were experiences or sight lines at each part like every window that you look out, I'll have to give you an inside tour. Every window that you look out, you see something pretty from the deck. Every vantage point that you look out into the yard, you see something pretty. One of the next things that I'm going to do once I line the beds over here, because I've got to do some edging. And once we get the furniture here, so we're going to start working on lighting the yard because it is dark because we don't have any lights installed. But from a planting standpoint landscaping standpoint everywhere that you look it has something pretty so now that the landscape is here once it gets established uh it'll provide some privacy it'll provide some food and it also provides just something pretty to look at and really like even though you see all this green space in the back of our yard we still feel like we're hugged in um even though we have these black rails so we got to work on privacy on this side of the yard which i'll figure out here shortly, I was debating on whether or not it was gonna be edible gardens or if I was gonna do privacy. And I think I'm gonna do privacy with edible gardens in front. So here's some close-up shots of the summer planters that we planted together. Um, just beauty, just beautiful. I don't know what else to say, just gorgeous. When these things, like they're, they're gonna start growing rapidly now that it's really warm here. And I can't wait to update you all on what this looks like. Be sure to keep up with us on Instagram. I'll probably post more pictures and stuff like that in my stories and on my feed. This right here, like this right here, I, I know I bought it for the flowers, but look at the leaves. I'm just, mm. if you haven't figured it out, plants, are like another layer of decor for me that add like texture and where you can't have artwork. Like I can't have artwork out here. So my plants do it for me. And I absolutely love decorating with plants when it's outside. Um, I'm excited to see this one bounce back. This is one of those hardy hibiscus that kind of went through it for the summertime. We had a little hailstorm, so some of her leaves got messed up, but she gonna be all right. She gonna be real cute. Miss Petunia, I don't even know what to call her. I don't know what the name of it is. I'll try to see if I can find a card and leave it in the description. She gonna do her thing. Like this is going to be such a show-stopping place back here. And I can see it from the inside of the house so the next time I do an inside tour I'll show you what the sight lines are from the window oh absolutely amazing so yeah that's the tour um that's where we are right now so now I have to decide on um furniture for out here 
It's a small space, so I'm thinking a six-seater table will suffice. Uh, something no more than like 72 inches will probably be good so I have to figure out what that's gonna be I had thought about building it but I don't know if I'll have the time or will want to I might just order something and have it delivered so I can really just enjoy it but I told y'all at the beginning of the year that my goal was to get out here and get as much done as possible so when this time of year came around all I had to do was sit on my butt and enjoy the fruits of my labor. And I think we're at that spot. You know, we're going to work on lighting. I'll probably dibble and dabble everywhere. But for the most part, we are stinking done. And then real quick, I'm going to show you this canna lily flower that's planted in the blue planter in the back. It's going to be yellow just like that. And that's going to be a wrap. Thanks for sticking around for today's episode. I can't wait to update you soon, friends.